What's up everyone? Welcome to Sabrina Talks. I'm Sabrina if you're new. If you're not, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me. Now today we are talking about Miss Ariana Grande again because today is Positions Day on my channel. So we will be taking a look at Ariana Grande's sixth studio album, Positions. But first I want to tell you kind of how I'm going to do this review. So instead of like in my previous video where I reviewed Victoria Monet's Jaguar, I went kind of song by song. This one I'm going to focus on some categories and explain what I heard and what I saw and what I thought about said categories. So before we kick it off into the categories, let me tell you about this album. Now like I said, this is Ariana Grande's sixth studio album. It is called Positions. There is 14 songs on this album. So it's about the amount that Ariana usually does. Now a majority of these songs on this album are quite short. They're about two minutes and some change. I think only one song is about four minutes and the rest are just some sprinkles of three minute songs. But these songs aren't so short to where I'm like upset. So I'm fine with them. Also fair warning if you want to listen to this album, this album is definitely an ex Explicit album just like uh, Thank You Next. There's definitely some cursing, there's some topics that she discusses that are not suitable for anybody under the age of 18. So if you don't like cursing or if you are under the age of 18 and should not be listening to such songs, be wary of it if you don't like that sort of thing. So now that you know a little bit of the album, let's get into the styles and sounds of positions. Now the genre of music that this album kind of encompasses is definitely R&B. Usually Ariana is very much of a pop girl. She sticks to her pop songs with little hints of like hip hop and little hints of R&B and little hints of, you know, various other genres. But with this album, I personally believe that this is a full R&B album. It still definitely has more pop sides because it's Ariana. If you've listened to Christmas and Chill, which was Ariana's like Christmas EP that she released a couple years back. I would say this album kind of sounds like that because Christmas and Chill was definitely more like a hip hop R&B kind of Christmas EP and I feel like this album really kind of follows suit in that. Most of the songs will have like a thrumming beat and pretty groovy like bass line and she in some songs brings about a like rapper style cadence. And if you don't know what a cadence is, a cadence is just basically like the rhythmic way someone will talk or sing. So Cadence would be like a rapper's flow, the way they kind of rap and way they would switch up different melodies of rapping. That would kind of be what she possesses in this album. Now this is nothing new for Ariana. She has done this plenty of times before in previous albums. I definitely think she's done it in Sweetener. Definitely in Thank You Next with the song Seven Rings. Now people are kind of iffy about that, but we'll get into that later. On songs like Just Like Magic, Nasty, Obvious, and 34 Plus 35, she definitely possesses that rapper cadence that goes along with the beat and just kind of the vibe of the album. Some of the cadences aren't, you know, all that original because Ariana is not really a rapper. If you like listen to Ed Sheeran, he also does that at some point. He always says he's a singer with a flow. So she kind of does that same cadence. Um, it's really typical in pop songs that kind of want to be hip hop and R&B. Another thing I really noticed with this album is the theme of strings. There's a beautiful arrangement of strings all throughout positions and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Within the first 10 seconds of the first song of the album, which is Shut Up, you are welcomed by a beautiful collection of strings that just portray such a beautiful melody. Songs like Shut Up, Off the Table, POV, 34 plus 35 positions, and Love Language, you can hear the strings very either obviously or just kind of in the background, but it's definitely a persistent theme of strings that I really think ties the whole album together. Ariana's addition to strings is also not a new thing that she has done from her album like Yours Truly to I think Dangerous Woman. She's included uh, like strings here and there, but I believe in this album she definitely kind of ramped up the amount of strings she wanted to add to the arrangements. Now with the addition of her adding strings throughout this album, in some songs the strings really emphasize a like theatrical feel to some of the songs. Like I mentioned with Shut Up and how it has some strings at the end. The melody and sound of the strings really to me at least 
reminds me of like a transition in a musical. Off the Table also gives me that like musical Broadway kind of transition vibe uh, that Shut Up does. Also in the song Motive that features Doja Cat, there is a sound towards the ending and throughout the song that really reminds me of like of the whimsical sounds of the Harry Potter theme song. That sound really kind of gives the song kind of like a fantastical, whimsical feel to it, which I really appreciate. And then the closer for this album, which is POV, that to me really sounds like a Broadway solo or, you know, the main climax of a, the main character's feelings in like a Broadway show because it's quite simplistic with like the instrumentation and the production but it also still feels so grand because of Ariana's vocals and because of the strings that are featured in there. It just sounds like, um, if you know opera, like an aria where they're really kind of belting out and releasing their emotions and feelings. And to me that really gives like such a grand theatrical feel. Plus, you know, if you know Ariana, she has theatrical Broadway background to her. So she has that kind of musicality to where even if she's singing, you know, a regular song, she'll kind of add that theatrics to it to make it feel a little more grand and a little more Broadway, if that makes sense. Some of the songs in this album also really give off a retro feel, also due to some of the string arrangement in the songs. So in the song like Motive, to me, it really gives like a, maybe like a 70s kind of vibe. Not as much as like Say So by Doja Cat. That one, that song has a real 70s vibe to it and like real disco vibe to it. But this one has more of like a funky kind of 70s, 80s song, which I think pairs really nicely with her and Doja Cat. The song My Hair, to me, really feels like she's singing at a jazz club in like the 60s or 70s. I feel like it kind of reminds me of the movie La La Land where they're kind of in like jazz clubs and people are singing and it's the songs that they sing are a little more soulful and, and emotional. I feel like my hair really captures that kind of vibe and sound. The addition of the like raspy trumpet that's in my hair really kind of enhances the jazz club feeling that this song provides you and I thoroughly enjoy that. Another song called Love Language, that one also really feels like 60s, 70s jazz club burlesque show, maybe at like someone singing at like Speak Easy. Even in the production of that song, they add like a little crowd sound to make it feel like you're maybe you know, at a club or something. And I really love that addition to this song. When I first heard Love Language, I thought of like the movie Burlesque or the movie Step Up because both of them really have the like strings and kind of a, a moving beat to it that kind of reminded me of both those movies. Also, there's a song on positions called West Side. And in the beginning of the song, it has a sound that sounds like cassette tape being rewinded and to me that adds the retro feel of the song but it also really gives it like a 90s R&B vibe. Also with the way that she's singing in a more like relaxed kind of chill vibe for this song really kind of reminds me of like a 90s R&B style and I really think that kind of works for her. Speaking of how she sounds in West Side, I want to talk about her vocals in this album. Now personally I think this is probably maybe the best she sounded vocally at least. The vocal arrangements that she did and the vocal layering that she really added to this album I think was immaculate. Another thing I noticed with this album is she effortlessly goes through her range in various songs on this album. So she'll you know kind of go into her lower octaves and kind of stick there. All of a sudden she's effortlessly going up to her higher octaves and just doing it it's so smoothly and effortlessly that it's just like Wow. Now usually back in her older album she used to be able to do that but it sounded a little bit, it still sounded good but it wasn't as I think trained as I think it sounds in positions. Now I can't talk about her vocals in positions without talking about the whistle tones that she beautifully placed throughout this album. Now if you don't know whistle tones are the highest register that a human can sing. So think like Mariah Carey, 
those kind of really high notes that essentially sound like a whistle. She really did her thing in this album putting those whistle tones in here. Now this is not the first we've heard of her whistle tones definitely in like Thank You Next. She's been hitting them in the songs like Imagine and In My Head but with this album she definitely was like now we're gonna sprinkle some more of that throughout this album because I need to show y'all what I can do. And she sure did like she has some of her whistle tones in the backgrounds of some songs so you might not notice it unless you're like fully paying attention with some good headphones but in other songs she's obviously just whistle toning down so on songs like off the table my hair she literally sings a whole chorus five lines of lyrics in whistle tones and it's just magnificent also in the beginning of nasty she you know throws out some whistle tones because why not in the least single positions you hear her whistle tones quite towards the ending of the song and i thought that one might be the only you know song that she decided to do some whistle tones in because like i said in thank you next she only really had like two songs where she kind of emphasized them but she surely proved me wrong because there's about five songs where she's just whistling out the wazoo. I watched an interview that she did with Zach Sang and she was talking about how she did all of the vocal arrangements, vocal layering, all the things leading to her vocals essentially she did that. You know it's one thing to just kind of be a singer and you just kind of follow what people are telling you to do but for her to know like oh no I want in this song I want my vocals to do this and then we're gonna add this to it to really you know do this and it's just wow like musicianship just shining. So speaking of what she has credits on for this album let's talk about the songwriting and the song credits for positions. Now to me lyrically this album is about up to par to what I usually expect from an Ariana Grande album. There's some fun songs where the lyrics are just kind of silly and ridiculous and then, and then there's some more serious songs where you really feel her emotions and she's really putting it on the table. Positions definitely melds well with the songwriting and like lyrics of sweetener and thank you next. I think that's mainly due to one Ariana just having more control of what she wants to put in a song and two she has her typical like songwriting producer crew that she usually works with for most of her albums. Now I'll, I'll talk about some of them because they're the ones that are like mainly featured on this album. So there's Victoria Monet which I've talked about Victoria Monet before you can go watch that video wherever it'll pop up somewhere. Um, she's been working with Ariana since yours truly then there's also taylor parks i think she's been working with her since maybe like my everything and uh dangerous woman this is the producer tommy brown also known as tb hits he's mostly known as being like ariana's go-to producer because he's involved in almost all of ariana grande's songs then i also wanted to mention a producer duo that is also featured on this album that also has been working with ariana since the beginning um which is the rascals now this is a producer duo that features leon thomas the third and Chris Riddick. So them two have been working with Ariana since the beginning of her career. Obviously because Leon has been working with Ariana since the Victorious days and on Yours Truly they had a couple of songs featured on that album which was Tattoo Heart and Honeymoon Avenue and I think Loving It and You'll Never Know. I forget but I know Tattoo Heart and Honeymoon Avenue definitely they written on those. On this album they did the song Safety Net which features Ty Dolla Sign and they also did the song Nasty. This is a side note but I really enjoy the fact that Ariana works with so much black people on a daily basis. Between Victoria, Taylor, Tommy, Leon, like all of the people that she tends to surround herself with are usually talented black people. Not only is you know it good for Ariana obviously because she's getting some success but it's really great for the people that she works with because now it just kind of adds to so much more black people getting such great accolades in this industry because Ariana Grande is out here breaking records and she wouldn't be able to be breaking records one because of her fans and her voice but mainly because the songwriting and producing of the songs are by black people and they're just generally really really good. My little tirade aside I also want to talk about how since this is such an R&B kind of album it really shows because she doesn't have her usual kind of pop trio of 
songwriters and producers that she uses, which are Max Martin, Ilya, and Savin Ko Koecha, I think his last name is. Them three are definitely rulers of the pop charts. If you look at any pop song, they will be featured in the songwriting credits for a ton of mega hit pop songs because they are usually the go-to if you want to make some good pop music. They have been freaking collaborators with RN for a while now. So I'm kind of glad that they're not featured on this album because I think they would have gave it too much of a pop feel. Also, let's do a quick little mention of all of the features on her album. There's only three features on this album and they're all essentially black people. <laughs> so there's Motive with Doja Cat, there's Off the Table with The Weeknd, and then there's Safety Net with Ty Dolla Sign. All of them, I think, add a different level of hip hop and R&B to her songs. Doja Cat is obviously a rapper, so she adds more of a hip hop tinge to like Motive. And then The Weeknd is obviously like an R&B singer. So he really compliments Ariana in Off the Table with the, the just slow kind of R&B vibes that he makes and also Ariana has made before. Ty Dolla Sign is the king of features and he always wonderfully adapts to whatever person he's collaborating with. So him and Ariana I think were a really good match. Within positions as a like collective body of work, I really think you can see a theme and like a story that's being told. So in the beginning of the album with like 34 plus 35, that's like you meet this person and you're really feeling kind of lustful toward them. So you know, you want to have some relations with them and just kind of see where this goes. Motive kind of talks about like, all right, so I'm kind of, I'm feeling you and you know, before I lead you on, as she says in the song, tell me what you want from this. Tell me what your motive. Do you want to just be casual? Do you want to have a relationship? you know, that kind of vibe. Starting with Off the Table, it's definitely getting more into the like, I think I'm starting to feel some feelings for you. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking is love maybe off the table because I've been hurt in the past and da da da. So I'm trying to, you know, figure out whether or not I should really kind of step into this relationship. And then in the song 630, she kind of moves into like, all right, well, I'm kind of, I think I want to go into this relationship. So are you down? Like, are you also on the same page as me? Do you also want to try this? And then with safety net, I think it's like realizing like, okay, well, I think I'm starting to fall for you. You know, we're going through this and I'm really starting to feel some feelings and I'm tripping, falling without no safety net, as she says in the song. And then we move into the song, My Hair. And I think my hair, she's kind of opening up and giving a more vulnerable side to her. So she's saying like, you know, I will let my guard down and you can play with my hair and really get to know me intimately. Love language is like, all right, well, we're, we're clearly really feeling each other. So let's really get to know each other's love language so we can really take this relationship to a next level. Then we go into positions where it's like, all right, well, we together, we already know what it is. I'm trying to meet your mom. I'm trying to, you know, jump through hoops so I can be everything that I need to be in order to be make this a great relationship. Obvious to me is telling them like, I'm obviously in love with you. I'm obviously ready and down for whatever. So I just want to let you know how I feel. Ending the album with POV point of view shows like a healed perspective of Ariana where she's like, all right, I've acknowledged that you love me, we've acknowledged that I love you, and now I, just, I wish that I can see myself the way you see me. I think as a whole, it just kind of tells the stages of like a relationship and the stages of, I guess like maybe even like the healing process of, you know, being hurt before and dipping yourself back into a relationship and dipping yourself back into being in love. So by now you could probably tell that I thoroughly enjoyed this album. My first initial listen when I listened to it at midnight on uh, the 30th of October, I felt the way I kind of felt after I listened to Sweetener. When I listened to Sweetener for the first time, I was like, there's some fantastic songs on this album. And then there's some songs where I actively just do not like that I really just cannot get down with. As I've listened to Sweetener more, I've grown with some more of the songs, but there's still some songs on that album that I really just don't like. With Positions, I was like, there's some really great songs on here. And then the other songs, I'm just kind of indifferent to. Like, I just thought they were cute and I they weren't really revolutionary. As I've listened to this album since it came out and as I've listened to it, you know, in diff different mediums. So I've listened to it in my car. I've listened to it with like some really good headphones. I've grown such an increased appreciation for this album. And I really think, in my opinion, this album sounds like a more elevated version of like Sweetener and Yours Truly, which is good because as an artist who's on her sixth studio album, 
you want to be making some progressions and I really think she has whether it be vocally production wise or just the styles and sounds that she is portraying with yours truly there's some heavy strings and like uh, R&B sounds included in the album but in hindsight now they sound a bit more juvenile whereas in positions the strings and the productions definitely sound more classy and more like higher quality and then I think with Sweetness Ariana is definitely like stepping more away from like pop music in that album so to me it's like sweetener but taken to a, a better level so I know for a fact there's going to be people who do not like this album solely because it's more on the R&B side and it's also more on the sexual side there's definitely some people who think Ariana doesn't make sexual music which I don't know where they've been and what they've been listening to but Ariana has been saying some sexual things since I want to say maybe my everything. Like, to wrap this video up I just want to mention my top five favorite songs of this album. I tried to make it a top three but I honestly couldn't pick and I was just being very indecisive about it. So we're gonna go with the top five. None of these are in any order but they are POV, My Hair, Love Language, Motive, probably my current fave as of uh, right now, which is Nasty. Those five songs are definitely what I've been kind of waiting for Ariana to make. So those naturally just are my favorite songs of this album. So that about wraps up my video. Let me know your top five songs from this album. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this album. Please be nice and respectful. You know, at the end of the day, it's music and music is a very subjective piece of art so be uh be nice and kind in the comments down below make sure you check out my previous video where i ranked all of ariana grande songs pre-positions stay tuned for next week where i talk about sam smith's latest album release which is the album called love goes i'll be talking about that next week and kind of giving my thoughts and opinions on that album you can follow me on social media if you want to talk to me some more there on instagram and twitter i am sabrina talks too and then on tiktok i am sabrina talks to you so remember to like this video because that really helps me out subscribe to my channel if you like talking about music and entertainment share this video with all of your other Ariana Grande friends so we can really have a nice good discussion about this album and as always let's remember to be safe be kind be smart get your flu shot make sure you stay indoors stay six feet apart wear a mask all of that good stuff and I'll see you in my next video bye guys